Stuart, I was reflecting on um, something that I had read, which is that there was a writer at the Korea Times who was so concerned by the headline writing, the way in which the LA Times was covering the incidents of those five days, that he actually wrote a letter to the editor and said, you need to tone it down. This is, this is actually inciting not only greater misunderstanding, but you know, adding fuel to, to the flame that, that Connie referenced. And, um, and you played a really important role, Stuart, in actually, um, and this isn't just about the LA Times, but actually bringing to the attention the LA Times, the way in which they were covering and, and we can use this as a proxy for, for the dominant media, um, but the way in which they were covering the communities that's, as, as Angela and, and Connie both said, the stories that were not being told and the way in which the depictions were actually um, uh, advancing the, the kinds of stereotypes that, um, that we know are just are inaccurate. Uh, thank you, Monica. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles um, since I was a baby. And uh, I think the conclusion uh, I have is that multiracial democracy really depends on media that's fair, accurate, and avoids pitting one group against another unnecessarily. And that was the point that I and uh, people like Angela and others made when we uh, protested the LA Times coverage. Uh, we went to the LA Times, we met with Shelby Coffey, then the editor, and we said, you know, I don't know if it's 1%, as Connie mentioned, but a very small percentage of Korean Americans uh, tried to protect their businesses with guns. But that was the only picture that was starkly uh, shown by the LA Times. A few Korean Americans with guns on rooftops uh, shooting down on people. And that picture uh, definitely fanned the flames. It wasn't accurate. It wasn't balanced. It um, took everything out of context. So the injustices that Connie and Angela talked about, the economic injustice, the criminal injustice, and the racial tensions were all covered by that picture. And so we confronted the LA Times. Uh, there were about 15 of us who uh, went into the office. We had an appointment and um, Shelby actually agreed with us. Uh, on the spot, he appointed a reporter to cover the Asian American community. And then within a couple of months, he uh, looked for the best Asian American reporter um, in California and chose Connie Kong, who reported for over 10 years and was a good reporter in that she deeply understood the community. It wasn't about race, uh, but it was about having reporters, as you said, um, Monica, who live in the community, who know the community, who speak speak the language of the community and could really um, understand the uh, issues. And so when we filed 1400 complaints against the police for deserting uh, South LA and Central LA, um, she covered it. When we sued the uh, 10 offshore insurance companies for not paying anything to the um, store owners, uh, she covered it. And incidentally, we, we had to sue the agents because all 10 insurance companies went bankrupt. Uh, so, you know, by going into the stories, you found, you did find interest. You did find, um, you know, some spectacular <laughs> injustices, uh, but you actually found out much more about what was happening than just those uh, pictures of uh, a few uh, merchants with guns. So I think that the lesson I learned is that you do have to confront um, the powers that be at times to say what's right and what's wrong, because if you don't, you just accept 
a media that actually could damage a multiracial democracy and not uphold a multiracial democracy.